hello there thanks for joining me on another video as you've uh, guessed this is all about cerium um, that's in ferrocerium rods uh, we all know what ferrocerium rods look like we've all probably used them um, but I don't think many people have seen cerium in its uh, in its raw form so I bought some uh, it's quite expensive as I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up but uh, I'll uh, Bring you in for a closer look. It's quite expensive, it's uh, one pound per gram, so I've got 10 grams here, uh, plus postage and packaging, which was a couple of quid. Uh, a very tiny amount, really. Um, so I'll bring you closer in, let's, uh, let's open this packet up. Okay, so this is what it looks like in the bag. Um, it does have a little bit of oil in, in with it, because once this is exposed to oxygen, it will start to oxidise. Not straight away, I don't think, but uh, it will oxidise. Right, so um, I've mainly brought this piece of paper. Didn't realise I'd find this white rock up here, actually, but I brought the piece of paper up so we can uh, so we can have a, a proper look at it. So I'm just going to open it up. As you can see, it's uh, quite oily. There's, I think there's three pieces in here. So there's another piece. I don't think I'll get that last bit out. It's just the tiniest of pieces. Okay, so what is cerium? Well, basically, it's on the periodic table. Uh, its number is 58. Its atomic number is 58. Now, I've heard a rumour that it can be cut with a knife. So let's have a go at that. So, yeah, you can cut it with a knife. If I did it a bit longer, I'd probably, uh, probably get through that. Just cutting it. Right, so yeah, it's uh, number 58 on the periodic table. It's, um, it's classed as a rare earth element. Uh, it is a metal. Um, some of its uses are for, as well as in these guys, um, some of its uses are, uh, you can find cerium in a catalytic converter on a car. Uh, they use it for self-cleaning ovens. It can be used in its oxidized form for polishing mirrors, like astro astronomical mirrors um, in telescopes, that kind of thing. It can be used to polish glass. Uh, it can also be used to change the color of glass. Uh, apparently, it changes the color of glass to yellow. There's some process that does that. So yeah, it's, um, basically, it's what's in our in our rods that we use, in our, in our ferro cerium rods. Okay, so we've got uh, cerium in our ferro cerium rods. So what does the word ferro cerium actually mean? What does it mean to us? Well, basically the ferro bit is iron. There's two metals that will give off sparks. One is cerium and the other one is iron. So when they make ferro cerium rods, they put iron in them as well as cerium. The other type of ferrocerium rods, I mean, ferrocerium is a generic name for all ferrocerium rods, all, all striking rods. They also put um, magnesium in some ferro rods. Now, this one has probably got magnesium in it because I've not used it that much, but it's quite worn. Whereas the bigger one, and it's not just because it's bigger, the bigger one is hardly any wearing on it. So the ferrocerium bit, the ferrocerium word means iron and cerium. So we've just seen cerium. Now I don't think I can get a spark off it, but we'll have a go in a minute off its raw state. Uh, okay, so 
what is actually happening when we strike a ferrocerium rod. Basically, as we scrape down the rod, the rod in this case is, is um, ferrocerium, so it's a ferro rod. It does contain high amounts of iron in it. Uh, the reason I can tell that is because the, the way that the sparks are coming off is giving lots of little sparks, not really any globules. Um, so I know that this is heavy in iron, with iron being um, quite a dense metal. Uh, in comparison, I brought up one here, which is a, a magnesium um, heavy ferro rod because it's it's got magnesium all the way around it so i suspect that this rod is magnesium and as you can see it's it's quite worn where's the camera so it's quite worn this one wears away quite easy um magnesium heavy uh ferro rods wear quicker than the iron counterparts so let's try this as you can see it, it's giving off more sparks and quite globuli. It wants to leave. It wants to leave particles behind, whereas this one just wants to give you lots of sparks. <clears throat> so what's happening when we do that is, as we scrape, it's actually lifting. Uh, minute particles i mean these 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 uh, sparks are measured in nanometers so as we scrape down it's giving off it's scraping some of that ferrocerium out of the iron because obviously the ferrocerium rod isn't coated with with cerium um it's the manufacturing process is it's within the metal so as you scrape down down it you're you're bringing minute part particles of that cerium off now I'm just going to, these are coated in oil a little bit, so let's see if we can get a spark off the just, can you see that? Just getting a spark off in its raw form. I'll try and bring it up to the camera. So yeah, that, I mean, that is like this rock that I'm using here, although this is limestone. Um, it is a rock and it's a, it's, it's a metal, you know, it's, a, it's, an it's an element, it's a metal. Uh, naturally occurring metal, like iron, which is also on the periodic table. So, I mean, I'm not suggesting you use this in a survival situation, a little piece like this. This is just for demonstration purposes. Big bit came off then. But yeah, you can... Now, I wasn't expecting that, so that's a, that's a surprise to me. So there we go, that's, that is cerium. So I've brought this little magnifier with me and I'll just place that over the camera lens or the phone lens, should I say. Let's take a closer look. So that's what it looks like. And apparently when this is oxidized, it goes black right so there we have it guys um, some of you, some some people may know about this kind of stuff some people may not a um, couple of examples here there's other there's other metals called mish metals that they use as well i uh, didn't really want to go into that too much but uh, take the a common kind of lighter zippo or one of these we all we all call it a flint that's in one of these which is actually wrong it's a mish metal um, there's a reason why they can sell these for you know five for a quid it's because it's mish metal inside it's uh, it's not it's not true cerium it's not flint i mean look at the price you know pound a gram it's going to be expensive lighter so what what they use is mish metal so it's a mixture of magnesium iron cerium and they put other stuff in there that helps it uh, helps it make sparks so i hope you found it uh, educational if not skip and watch another video um <laughs> So I just thought I'd do this little video, seeing as though the Sirium arrived the other day. Um, I do know I've still got this uh, challenge to do that's been set by, by um, X-Ray Zulu. Plan on doing that on this Friday, so um, hopefully 
fingers crossed everything goes well for that um so that's that's it guys thanks for watching thanks uh coming along on the journey with me may have learned something may not maybe a load of useless information to you but i thought it was you know nice to nice to find out about these things i'm quite inquisitive like that um, i like to know how things work so i'm going to leave it there guys um, thanks for watching please like and subscribe do all the usual stuff um, and i'll see you all on the next video guys cheers